Hello, Brad Wardle, call sign Captain Wingnut from Cougar Ridge Ranch high in the Inta Mountains of Eastern Utah. If you've got a septic tank or cesspool, you might wonder if it's even necessary to flush anything special down here to create the bugs that can digest the paper and the solids. And I think you know what solids I'm talking about. Well, the answer is yes. And the second question that you're going to ask is, can I be a chemist and make those chemicals myself instead of having to buy these expensive things to pour them down the drain every month or so? And the answer is yes. I'm going to teach you how to do this. It's really simple, really cheap, super easy with things you've already got around the house right now, I'm sure. And you can create your own supercharged bugs and keep your cesspool or septic tank and your leech lines clean. We just had our septic tank pumped because it's been 20 years. And the septic service guy said that our tank was perfect. It didn't need to have been pumped. It was working just beautifully. We actually had one of our other hose houses that needed some work done on the leech lines. So we decided to have that septic tank pumped and we thought, well, might as well do both at the same time. Hindsight, we could have saved a lot of money by not having either one of them pumped because they were both working fine. We just had some cracked uh, leech lines on the other one. So my wisdom, my hindsight is now foresight and I'm teaching you my learned wisdom so that you can save yourself. All right, enough lip flapping. Let's go make some super bugs. first thing you should know is that in a perfect world, most septic tanks can operate just fine on their own without any additives. However, we don't live in a perfect world. So I like to err on the side of caution and treat my septic tanks with preventative measures versus wait and see if it's working or whoa, all of a sudden you hear, Captain, poopy backing up in the toilet. Nah, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna wanna watch this to the end too because I'm gonna share with you a couple of tips that can save you from unbelievable stress and anguish, not to mention thousands and thousands of dollars and terrible inconvenience. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to introduce and rejuvenate the bugs in your septic tank every three to four months so that yours can be just like ours when you have the pumping service say, you don't need to do it. It's working fine, save your money. Oh, while we're here, if you like the content of my videos, if you like what I do, please subscribe, click the bell icon. It really helps me a lot. And let me just say this, thanks in advance for subscribing. And if you're already one of my great subscribers, thank you for sticking with me. Also, if you'd like to leave a comment and tell me what you'd like about my videos and what I could do to improve for you, while I try desperately to reply to every comment, I don't always see them all. I miss a lot. It's sometimes that I find comments on my uh, pad I don't see on my phone. And I don't see what's on my phone on my pad or I don't see that on the computer. So it depends on where I log in to my channel of the comments that I see. It's really strange. I don't know how YouTube does it. It really puzzles me. Anyway. Thanks in advance. So, septic tanks and cesspools operate on the principle of bacteria digesting and liquefying the stuff that gets flushed down. But there's a caveat here. When you clean your sinks and your showers and your toilets with chlorine bleach and other bacteria killing chemicals, hey, it's a good practice for cleanliness and hygiene. But these chemicals also kill the bacteria in your septic tank or cesspool. And once that happens, the stuff that you flush is not getting broken down and liquefied and your leech lines could plug up. And if that backs up into your septic tank or your cesspool, then you start noticing some really disgusting and nasty stuff backing up in your tubs, showers, toilets, and sinks. For me, it's easier just having the peace of mind that I'm always putting new bacteria and fortifying enzymes in so the backup problem will not occur at my house. The septic additives that you buy in the store 
to put down the toilet are typically enzymes that are very good at liquefying waste, but they run out of juice, they quit. And these additives seldom contain the beneficial bacteria that created them. So, if you're using uh, hygiene chemicals, then you're killing the bacteria in your cesspool or septic tank and you need to put them back. If you have sufficient healthy bacteria in your septic tank, you're getting the digestion action and liquefaction that you want and it all comes naturally from the bacteria. You see, as the bacteria eat what they want, they give off gas and pectinase. I'll talk about that word pectinase in just a moment. Okay, I'm about to show you how to make a batch of super bacteria with the energizing enzymes that will go to work immediately liquefying the waste, including solids and papers in your septic or cesspool, and this will keep your leach lines clear. I'll put the recipe and some other notes in the description. So let's get started. First, we're going to start with the shock treatment. You're going to use this as your initial treatment no matter if you've been putting treatments down the pipe or if you've never done anything to your septic tank or especially if you just had it pumped out. You'll flush this treatment down the toilet and then in a month you'll move to the regular maintenance treatment and you'll continue that once every three or four months. The shock treatment is just to make sure that you've got a plentiful supply of bacteria and enzymes bubbling and digesting your septic system and giving it a good head start. The maintenance treatment will add to and amplify the beneficial bacteria and enzymes in your system. Okay, you've probably got some tomatoes in the bottom of your fridge that are going moldy and rotten, right? Yeah, we did too. Don't throw them away. They actually contain the exact enzymes that the good bacteria in your septic tank make. These enzymes are what you would normally buy in the store in these $15 or more bottles that you pour down the toilet to juice up your septic system. The enzymes that rotten tomatoes contain are called pectinase. They're known as pectinolytic enzymes, which are a group of enzymes that hydrolyze or liquefy pectic substances. You can look up pectinolytic enzymes, I'll put the name in the description, but suffice it to say they help break down and liquefy the solid matter. The bacteria will give off pectinase if they're digesting fruit, but when they're digesting other solids in your septic tank, they need some further help to liquefy it. And all that is where your rotten tomatoes come in. You're gonna take three, six, whatever toma rotten tomatoes you've got, you're going to grind them up in a blender and you're going to set that puree aside. Now it's best if this is room temperature, not directly cold out of the fridge because it's going to hurt the next step that we're going to do. All right, here's what we're going to do for the shock treatment. You're going to get yourself a bucket. I use a small two gallon bucket, but even a large pot would work. Get three cups of lukewarm water, two cups of sugar, two cups of cornmeal, and one half cup of bread yeast. This is in the description. We buy the big bricks of yeast at Costco and use it for this and bread baking and it's very inexpensive. Replacing and adding baker's yeast to your septic system is a healthy way to maintain and keep your healthy level of bacteria in your system and it's the exact bacteria that you need. People don't know that so it's the very bacteria that you need in your septic system. Okay, Let's mix the lukewarm water up with the cornmeal, sugar, and yeast in the bucket and let's stir it for a couple of minutes until the sugar is completely dissolved. Now we're going to set it aside and wait for it to begin to really bubble. Now, word of warning, if you set it aside too long, it's going to bubble over. It will get crazy. But you want to just get some, you know, a, an inch of good bubbling going on. Now, pour the tomato puree in the bucket of bubbling bacteria and stir it up. Hey, if uh, it's real thick at this point, you can uh, dilute it down now. Now you got the yeast going and the tomatoes are in. And if it's really thick, you can dilute it now at this point with another uh, three to six cups of water. It'll make it easier to pour in the toilet. Let's go pour it in the toilet. You're going to pour the contents of the bucket down the toilet that is closest to your septic tank. 
So, to start, flush the toilet and wait for it to recharge its water supply. Now, stir everything in the bucket one more time and immediately pour the bucket and its con pour the bucket contents, not the bucket and its contents, pour the bucket contents as fast as the toilet will handle it without overflowing. That's kind of a logical thing. Don't overflow your toilet. You don't need to pour this in every toilet. One toilet is good. The toilet close enough to your septic system because this is just the delivery system, the funnel that gets it into the septic tank. Pouring this mixture in the toilet might start the siphon of the toilet, but whether it does or doesn't, be sure to flush the toilet at least twice after you've poured this in. Then wait five minutes and flush it again, and then repeat this action two more times. So all in all, you're going to have flushed your toilet five times, the last three waiting five minutes between flushes. That's it! Next month, you're gonna use the maintenance treatment and you'll find that recipe in the description too. Use the maintenance treatment every three or four months to maintain the health, your healthy septic uh, ecosystem. All right, here's tip number one that I promised you. Never throw away tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, well, now you know why. Find a place in the bottom of your refrigerator or just put them in a baggie on the counter. Out of my counter, mister! and keep them in a zipper bag and let them go rotten. Then put them in the sinkerator, the garbage disposal, whatever that, whatever you call that thing in the sink that grinds everything up and sends it down to the septic and feed your super bugs. They're more potent, these tomatoes, if, they're, if they've gone rotten. And now here's tip number two that might save you a lot of anguish and thousands of dollars. And while we didn't need our septic tank pumped out because it was doing just fine, I want to help you save thousands of dollars, ugly inconvenience and anguish. Now, keep in mind, this is not a paid promotion. I don't get paid to, to say this. It's just the cold hard fact. Scott Tissue and Kirkland brand are some of the best layered tissue for septic systems. Oh, you can buy that single layer thin stuff that's made for septic systems. But what we noticed is that it takes four times as much of that paper to get the job done. So in the end, you're using just as much. When we had our tank pump, the serviceman said that it was evident that we were using the right paper. And he asked, which brand do you use? And I told him, and he said, use caution when you look at paper. He says, do not ever buy and use the paper with those cute little bears on the label that wipe their behinds with that soft, soft, soft tissue because that will kill your system. That soft, soft tissue makes it almost impossible for your septic superbugs to digest because it's made with lint fibers and lint fibers do not break down. They will plug up your leach lines like radiator stop leak plugs a hole in a leaky radiator. And when your leach lines plug up, it's going to back up into your septic system and that's going to back up into your tubs and your showers and your toilets and your sinks and you're going to have a major issue you're going to have to have your septic tank pumped and worse you're probably going to have to have your leach lines dug up and replaced because this stuff is going to plug the holes in your leach line so if you've been using this cute little bear tissue stop and pray that your leech lines are not plugging up. If it were me, and I learned that we'd been using this uh, little bear tissue, I'd consider having my septic tank pumped right now to get it out because it does not break down and it's only a very expensive problem waiting to happen. Okay, so that's how you keep your septic or cesspool system tuned up. I know this was a crappy topic to talk about, but if you have a septic system or a cesspool, I hope it's helped you. Captain Wingnut, signing off. Mom, come and get me, I'm through.